Hello everyone and welcome to this video. We are going to be focusing on the main inspiration of the genetic algorithm. This algorithm mimics one of the most fundamental and most well-regarded theories in the field of biology called the theory of evolution. If you have a background in biology, you will find a lot of concepts fairly straightforward, so you can skip them or you can skip even the entire video. But if you don't have a background in biology, you don't have to be worried at all. Why? Because just like my other videos and my other courses, I will be using intuitive analogies, fairly straightforward examples so that anyone from any field can understand. Once you understand the concepts, once you understand the inspiration, then we will see the main mechanisms and then of course we'll implement them with a programming language. And after implementing the algorithm, we can then solve any optimization problem. All right, I'm sure that are very excited to hear more about the genetic algorithm, so I don't wanna keep you waiting anymore. So let's watch the rest of the video and understand the main concepts or the most fundamental concepts about this algorithm. The genetic algorithm is one of the first and most well-regarded evolutionary algorithms in the literature. John Henry Harland invented this algorithm in the 1970s. The acronym for this algorithm is GA and I'll probably use it very often throughout the course, so make sure to keep it in your mind. GA mimics the Darwinian theory of evolution proposed obviously by Darwin, Charles Darwin. One of the key mechanisms in this theory is natural selection or survival of the fittest. And this is exactly the main inspiration of the GA algorithm. Natural selection refers to the variations in the genotype of organisms that increase the chance of survival. In the coming slides, we are gonna be talking about the genotype, the organisms, and the survival. So if these terms are new to you, don't worry, don't be stressed. I will introduce them one by one. Let's start with natural selection. In natural selection, those variations in the genotype that increase an organism's chance of survival are preserved and multiplied from generation to generation. For example, if sharp tooth is good for an animal, for example for sharks, nature will preserve those sharp tooth generation by generation. So the future generation can also benefit from those sharp tooth to probably catch praise. To better understand this concept, or the concept of natural selection, which is the main inspiration of the GA algorithm, as I said before, let's go through an analogy. Please note that I oversimplified a lot of things so that you understand the concepts better and easier. So if you have a background in biology, please don't get mad on me, okay? I don't want to underestimate things in your field of study or in the field of biology. I'm trying to simplify everything so that anyone from any background can understand the main concepts. So, we assume that there is an ecosystem with a large number of organisms of which I have visualized some examples. We have some creatures on the land, in the air, or of course, under the water. We concentrate on those living underwater. One of the main objectives of all these organisms, no matter where they live, is survival. They interact in the form of collaboration or competition to increase the chance of survival, right? For example, two species like tiger and wolf compete on a land, right? So that they can catch prey. Or a school of fishes form swarms so that they better avoid predators and catch prey. There are many factors here that define how fit an organism is, such as fertility, mating success, intelligence, and etc. So that means depending on how fit and how good an species is, they can 
survive better because they can compete better, they can avoid predator better. So that means depending on how good an organism is, it can better avoid predator or catch prey in the nature. Here's an example in which we have one shark, two catfishes, and a bunch of other small fishes. Regardless of whether these organisms are carnivorous or herbivorous, which means meat eater or plant eater, they compete on food, right? Depending on how fit they are or how good they are, they can better compete on resources and of course they can increase their chance of survival better than other species or other organisms. In this example, one of the catfishes will be eaten by the shark because it doesn't swim very fast or it doesn't swim fast enough. So this catfish was a good example of an organism that is not fit. By contrast, this bad boy is a bit different from the catfish that died just now. It has several fins to swim and run away from the predator faster. So it's got good feature and they allow the catfish to survive better, or I should say to survive longer. In addition to those fins, the catfish got a very nice looking mustache, right? You can clearly see the mustache here. This mustache allows the catfish to sense the environment better, and of course, it looks very nice, and the catfish looks like a real man, okay? So that allows the catfish to better find a mate. Wait a second, wait a second. I think we are getting a bit off topic here, right? So I was saying that feeder organisms survive better and that's what I was planning to say. But it seems the cash fee doesn't want us to continue uh, our video. Anyway, let's summarize everything and then we will start the next part. So whatever we covered so far means that if an organism is not fit enough, it will be perished, okay? It will die either by starvation or it will be eaten by other creatures or other organisms. The key point here is that the genes or good characteristics of the fetus organisms are protected and transferred to the next iteration simply because they can survive longer. This analogy discussed the idea of selection in nature, although, as I said before, I oversimplified a lot of things. But at least, now you get the idea of natural selection. It's fairly straightforward. If something is good, if an organism is fit, it will survive longer and it can participate better in the production of the next generation. So good genes and good features will be transferred from one generation to the next. So how do they do that? I'm sure you know the answer. They do that by mating. The two terms that refer to the same thing are recombination or crossover. So the term mating is probably a bit informal, so I'm not gonna use it in the rest of the video and in the rest of the course. So I'll be using widely used term instead of mating. They are called recombination or crossover. So these terms refer to the same concept, that two organisms mate to be able to produce children for the next generation. Here's an example. We are going to see how the natural selection and crossover allow organisms to maintain good genes. We assume again that we have a group of sharks, catfishes, and other small fishes. In fact, this is a kind of food chain in which Sharks eat catfishes, and catfishes eat other small fishes. As you can see here, a catfish requires fins to swim faster and avoid sharks. They also need a mustache to be able to sense the environment better and also catch the prey. Over time, catfishes with less fins and mustaches are eaten by sharks 
or die due to the starvation. However, the good ones with better fins or better mustaches will survive and participate in the production of the next generation. This figure is a rough example of this process. As you can see, after preserving good features generation by generation by the natural selection, the last catfish is a bad boy. It's got a lot of fins, a lot of mustaches, small long, so it can beat any shark and any small fishes. That doesn't mean that this catfish is going to survive forever. Depending on the environmental condition and the, and the entire ecosystem, they can survive longer or shorter. It totally depends on the ecosystem. For example, sharks might develop a new feature or might develop new fins or a, a couple of tails. I don't know, the, the possibility is endless here. So I'm trying to say that they might develop new things or new features or new genes, I should say, so that they can beat other catfishes. Here is another analogy to see how the combination or crossover works. We have two catfishes here. The orange one has two fins and two mustaches. The green catfishes also has two fins, but they are of different sizes and located on different positions. This corresponds to a gene in an organism. We assume that the characteristics of each catfish is stored in the table with one row and multiple columns. The set of genes that define how the catfish look like is called chromosomes. So a chromosome is the set of genes. When mating, the chromosomes of both parents are combined. That means they exchange genes to be able to produce a child. The yellow and purple colors in this figure clearly show the process of recombination. It is evident that the children tend to be better than the parents since the first child has one big fin and the second child has two fins. So that was the second main mechanism in the theory of evolution and of course the genetic algorithm. So, so far we have covered natural selection and crossover or recombination. The problem is that with considering the selection and recombination, individuals or organisms keep changing the genes in their chromosomes. But the question here is, what does a catfish do in our analogy if the ecosystem changes? For example, what does a catfish do or what does the nature do to improve a catfish if we have now much fitter or much better predators and much better prey? So there should be a mechanism so that a catfish develop new feature because they don't just need to exchange the good features or they, they, they combine the good features of the current population or current organisms in the population they need to develop new features. The crossover does not add a new feature, nor the selection. According to the theory of evolution in biology, chromosomes might face random changes during the process of recombination. This is called mutation, which refers to the random changes of the genes during the process of recombination. For example, if a gene is supposed to be a small fin, suddenly the mutation makes it a very, very big fin, or very, very small fin. In our analogy, mutation causes adding a third eye to one of the childs in the second generation, or a very, very big mustache in the third child. In this picture, you can also see how the mutation might also change individual in future generation. Because if the gene is good, if the mutation results in a better gene, the natural selection and also recombination will protect them and transfer them to the next generations. But what will happen if the mutation creates something negative? If the mutation makes a negative feature or results in a less fit organism, 
the natural selection will get rid of that bad feature or that bad gene. For example, if a catfish faces a lot of mutation and it's got very, very tiny fins, it's going to die really quickly in, in the ecosystem, right? So that means those negative genes don't get the chance to transfer to the next generation or they are very unlikely to be transferred to the next generation. A question that you might be asking now is what are the advantages of mutation? Well, with the crossover and constant competition between organisms, certain features might disappear as we move on to the next generation. The mutation mechanism allows reverting some of those lost features or adding new ones to promote the diversity of the generation. In this picture, you can see the impacts of mutations on the chromosomes. The blue boxes are the areas affected by the mutation. We have similar children, but they have developed new organs or new features to use. And again, as I said before, those new features might be beneficial or not, and the natural selection will decide whether those features will be transferred to the next generation or not. So let's summarize everything. The main inspiration of the G algorithm is the theory of evolution, in which there are three mechanisms, selection, recombination or crossover, and mutation. So that was all about the main inspiration of the genetic algorithm. Honestly, I have nothing else to say because the inspiration is, is very straightforward and simple. And I hope that the analogy allow you to understand everything in depth. So let's summarize everything. The genetic algorithm mathematically model these three steps or these three mechanisms or concepts. Natural selection, recombination or crossover, and also mutation, okay? So once you implement these three steps, or once you simulate these three steps, you can then mathematically formulate your problem and then apply the algorithm to the problem, so maximize or minimize an objective. And to me, the nature has been the, or is still the oldest and the most powerful optimization algorithm in, on this planet. Because if you think about nature, if you look around yourself, you'll find a lot of creatures, from very small creatures like ants to big ones like elephants, they have been evolved. They have, they have been developing good features, good genes, to be able to tackle their difficulties that they face or the challenges that they face in a real world environment or in, in an ecosystem. So what is the objective? The objective is to simply maximize the survival. They all develop all those features, they've been working together, they've been competing on resources only and only to maximize the chance of survival. So in the later videos, on, I should say in later videos, we'll be going through each of these steps and implement them one by one in a program language and then once we finish everything we'll then solve optimization problem with this powerful but simple optimization algorithm. So that's the end of this video. I hope that you enjoy the analogy and the concepts and the inspiration and I will see you in the next one.